Trial continues for two former child welfare workers who managed the case of a five-year-old boy killed by his parents. Investigators found A.J. Friend buried in a shallow grave in Woodstock four years ago. His parents both convicted in his murder. Dana Rebick is here with more on today's proceedings, day two. That's right, and today there was only one witness on the stand this afternoon. This morning there was a bit of a delay over some confusion uh, on documents. That got sorted out, and then we heard again from this retired DCFS supervisor. Under cross-examination, defense attorneys stressed that there is nothing outlined in DCFS procedures that a violation of a required investigative step results in criminal charges. These former employees were both fired, but the state feels their lack of due diligence and follow through had a direct result in AJ Friend's murder at the hands of his parents. You don't want to put a kid in a situation where a parent has serious mental health record or health issues such that it would affect their safety. Did defendant Acosta ever seek permission based on your review of the C sequence to obtain Cunningham's mental health or substance abuse records? No. In court, retired DCFS supervisor Carol Ruzicka asked whether the caseworker and manager assigned to AJ Friend's case followed department procedures after Crystal Lake Police contacted them in December 2018, concerned about a large bruise on the five-year-old's torso AJ said came from the family dog and deplorable conditions in the home. Based on your experience, does this look like these injuries were caused by a dog, quote, putting his paw on a child? Uh, no. He doesn't. He doesn't explore anything with the child. It's very, in my opinion, superficial. He's not utilizing any of his clinical skills or investigative skills. Ruzicka speaking about DCFS investigator Carlos Acosta, who later the same day released AJ back into his mother's custody as long as she took him to a doctor to have the bruise evaluated. He told that doctor it came from a belt and that, quote, maybe mommy didn't mean to hurt me. That doctor said she wasn't an expert in child abuse and that the child should be forensically examined by another provider. That never happened. Ruzicka read aloud a text message Acosta sent to his supervisor, Andrew Pollivan, that day. Kid said big dog put his paw on me. I take that to mean a scratch. And then at 1135, he gets a reply from defendant Pollivan saying, that looks nasty, but if that's what the kid says. McHenry County State's Attorney Patrick Keneally walked through a timeline of past DCFS and police contact with AJ's mother, Joanne Cunningham, from 2013, when AJ was born with opiates in his system and was removed from her care for two years, to March through July 2018, when she turned up at two separate hospitals with signs of heroin use, suicidal behavior, and was arrested for battery. The state says the DCFS caseworkers didn't request or view any of those records for Cunningham, Andrew Friend, the boy's father, nor Daniel Nowicki, her boyfriend who was living in the home at the time. They also did not require a drug test for any of them, a second opinion about the bruise, and closed the case unfounded for abuse. The DCFS state expert says at a minimum, Acosta and Pollivan should have requested what's called intact family services care, which would have entailed weekly visits to the home. Anger management, if it means parenting, if it means counseling. Um, in Ms. Cunningham's case, uh, I'm, with the mental health issues and stuff, there's many probably professionals that would have been involved. In your opinion, with the services that you've discussed, would that have been sufficient to prevent ongoing abuse of AJ into 2019? I believe so. Again, both of AJ's parents are convicted in his murder and are behind bars. Acosta and Pollivan are each charged with child endangerment and reckless conduct and could face up to five years in prison if convicted.